Welcome, one and all. This is the Peace Dealer. Welcome to part three of this love and sex webinar where we are going to venture in and look at Mars and Venus, or rather, I guess, Venus and Mars. The order really doesn't matter, but the essence of both definitely does. So thank you for joining me live in this webinar. We are going to hop into the Peace Mobile portal and enter PowerPoint land as I will show you a few slides that will detail, well, I don't really detail, but it will symbolize very important aspects. And once again, we're really just gonna look into Mars and Venus, specifically in the natal chart, in synastry, and through transits. In part one, I specifically spoke at length about Venus. We really looked into Venus through the zodiac signs in the houses and, it's, and the aspects that it makes to other planets, but we didn't include Mars. And we did the exact same thing for Mars in part two, when we uncovered more desire and the language of desire, but we didn't really talk about Mars and Venus. This is what we're finally gonna do in part three, definitely specializing the significance between pleasure and desire and how they dance together. That being said, I encourage you to right now, before we begin, write down, especially if you're in a live chat or just keep a mental note in your head, your Mars and Venus position, what house Mars and Venus is in your chart and what sign Mars and Venus is, what aspect do they personally make in your chart and come up with an initial meaning of this. What do you feel and believe it means? And how do you feel your desire interacts with your sense of pleasure? And join me as I hop right into PowerPoint land. Welcome to the Sexual Union webinar, the sacred dance between pleasure and pain. It's like pleasure and desire. And I say pleasure and desire because love and sex is 100% influenced by what it is we find pleasurable and desirable in this life. as well as everything, we're also in a profound position to gain a whole lot of understanding when it comes to how you can be more aware of your primal desire and how you could also be even more aware of how your pleasure attracts situations, your sense of pleasure. I don't know about me, but do you, I don't know about you rather, but does anyone else feel like um, your power has come back at a much deeper level than normal? Because personally with this current transit, I can definitely attest to a very, very interesting 
deepening of energy and it's really coming into a much deeper sense of how you sense your desire. So I just kind of want you to ride with this feeling and know it's going to not only get deeper, but you're going to really feel that you take your power back, not, not even necessarily just from other people, but from the parts of yourself that um, you may have blocked yourself. And it's the sacred dance between pleasure and desire, once again, that is the prerequisite to partaking in sexual union, where no matter who you are with, you are able to align the pleasure and desire within you so that you can do it with others. Keep this in mind as before we really get heavy into the synastry, which we will, we're going to really look more into how you align pleasure and desire within yourself. More often than not, whenever you have a compatibility issue with somebody, it's actually more because you may not be in alignment within with your own Mars and Venus, which reflects and how it projects towards the other with that, plus any imbalances you may also have. And we're going to uncover if you find this is true as we interpret most of these aspects. Okay. Once again, when we speak of Mars and Venus, we are uncovering the divine partnership of sexuality. There are other notable conjunctions in astrology that very powerfully and rawly represent the archetype of yin and yang. We have the classic combo sun and moon the sun and moon in, in in an interpersonal sense will indicate a completion between one soul and spirit and how they have to come into harmony in this lifetime or not the moon and mars is another such connection and don't sleep on the sun and Venus too. But the the very classic combo is of course, Mars and Venus. Whether challenging, harsh, or very pleasant, Mars and Venus contacts are going to, in a very powerful and sexual way, light the fire of passion between the potential that is possible to be shared between two others. And there's a very profound level of courage, boldness, but also love and bliss that can be gained when this divine partnership is established. Keep that in mind is most of what you experience when unifying these two energies has much to do with how you harmonize these two energies within yourself. The harmonization of these two energies within yourself is what's going to directly attract a vibrational match who also does this with you. As they unify these energies within themselves and then you both reach union. 
as such, if you find that your Mars and Venus is out of harmony, which you'll understand if you don't know after this webinar, you will be given the tools and tips for how to deal with any such challenges or further take advantage of any such blessings you already have. When it comes to Mars and Venus and also the themes of love and sex, both of them represent love and sex. Mars is more the love of passion expressed through desire, the love of conquering and achieving and strengthening will through its aggressive nature, but more so the exuberant expression of willpower. And Venus is the love of pleasure that supplements desire as you gain a sense of beauty. This is the love of being desired, which is what makes Venus so very much so receptive to Mars and Mars so hard for Venus. One thing to keep in mind is that with this inner understanding and harmonization, you will also come to profound clarity into how these energies express themselves per with a man versus with a woman. Keep this in mind for the synastry. When you find that there is a dominant Mars Venus connection between a man and a woman, or even between a woman and a woman and a man versus a man, because this will also express itself in relationships between friends and siblings. One person's going to be more dominant, and one person may at times be more passive. That's not the word. But this polarity of masculine and feminine energies plays itself out very much so. The one who is more Mars dominant will express these qualities, but I specifically want to highlight relationships of any context, but especially sexual between men and women, you will see uh, the Mars dominant woman very attracted to Venusian dominant men. And of course, Mars dominant men, very attracted to Venusian dominant woman. But in the case of same sex, you'll find the masculine force will be very attracted to the feminine energy. This is very important to keep in mind because after we talk about Mars, Venus, we're also gonna talk about Mars, Mars, and Venus, Venus, which is a very, if not just as important. And it's very important once again for both of these sides to achieve harmony. So because of gender roles and societal conditioning, women embrace too much of their Venus and men embrace too much of their Mars. And women are not necessarily, how do I say this? Women aren't necessarily um, praised if anything, they're very shamed for expressing their more Martian qualities, whereas men are also shamed for expressing more of their Venusian qualities. As we step into greater social consciousness and awareness, 
stuff like this is going to balance out to where you don't have this imbalance in relationships anymore. Usually because in a relationship, even between same sex couples, which I feel same sex relationships may not suffer from this as much. But regardless, when one person leans too much to their masculine or feminine side while suppressing the other, this is ultimately what will cause, even though you may have compatibility with somebody else, where your masculine side connects with their feminine side or the other way around, because you might be suppressing your other side, let's say you're a masculine dominant, then you may be suppressing your feminine side. Even if you attract relationships that bring compatibility, you both on one level suppressing that other side will cause a huge disharmony where over time that suppression will manifest. This I think is one of the most important things if you don't remember anything I said in this webinar, you should remember this. As this is a generational influence, people will start doing. For example, it's a very, it's, it, it, it's not necessarily as common to see traditionally masculine roles playing the feminine role and alternating between their partner, whether opposite sex or same sex. And because of transits that will make your feminine or masculine side more powerful, sometimes you have to alternate, especially if you're heavy mutable. Usually fixed signs or cardinal signs are stubborn enough to stick to one identity. However, even you, even though they will achieve, will, will experience breakdown if they can't balance it. So once again, it's not necessarily um, important perhaps for, you know, both involved to just let one take over the other. No, you, the, the, the wrong side of this too is maybe someone completely giving away their dominant side and focusing too much on the other, which could even be worse. <laughs> but of course, once again, achieving harmony and balance. So when it comes to divine partnership of sexuality, this is not just taking your Mars and connecting it with someone's Venus or taking your Venus and connecting with someone's Mars. You also want to take your Venus and connect with their Mars or your Mars and connect with their Venus. That's going to give you true sexual compatibility where even if you share challenging or harsh aspects with another person, because you are harmonized deeply inside, you will circumvent this. So with that being said, um, we are now going to go into the aspects and we'll be looking at these aspects in three dimensions. So the first classic combination we have with sexual union, or rather Mars conjunct Venus, sexual union. And let me tell you, my friends, it is every bit as fun and exhilarating as you would expect. And as you have heard, this, I think, every one of us may have experienced because the quality of or the ease that comes with the conjunction makes connecting sexually with anyone very easily so very very pleasant too so this is one of those cheat codes uh that i'll see in a chart if you see that your venus conjuncts someone's mars or your mars conjuncts their venus that's that's a clear indicator that there is a clear sexual attraction. So it would literally have to be other energies that block that from happening, but it's very important because this is one of those indicators that lets you know you can have sex with that person right there, right then. Even if it's in 
a more intimate sign like Scorpio or Cancer or Capricorn that might want to wait for the right time. That conjunction is a key indicator. If you ever want to know if someone likes you, if they're, if they're ever sexually attracted to you, that's, that's one key indicator to let you know. In fact, any Mars Venus aspect will usually indicate this. The more, the more um, challenging ones and, and the uh, direct ones like this. But before we go into synastry, we're going to go into the natal. If Venus conjunct Mars, or, or rather, and Mars conjunct Venus in the natal chart is, of course, going to indicate the sexual union of energy, whether in a transit, whether in synastry, or whether natally. And this natal energy is going to represent <laughs> the complete union and fusion of the masculine and feminine. In fact, in some cases, it is very hard for people with Mars and Venus conjunct to differentiate and not get confused between what's love and what's sex. Their pleasure and desire are fused and unified to where what pleases them also is what they desire. And it's very passionate the way people with this conjunction go after what it is they desire, okay? Or not only what it is they desire, but what pleases them. The creativity that this conjunction brings also makes it very amazing for creators, creative people have this conjunction where they're able to express their desire in the most beautiful way, okay? So it's, it makes for someone very talented and it also makes for a very passionate lover, someone who knows how to love in a very passionate way as well, okay? In the case of the, 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 the lesson here, rather, though, for the natal is that because it's so blended, sometimes they could lose themselves in one mode. But I'm not going to say anything negative about conjunction because it's overall the bee's knees is really awesome. I mean, it, it could be it, 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 it could be hard to tell, you know what I mean? What is just lust or what is just pleasure? You know, a sense of, and it's interesting because people see Mars as lust when Venus is just as much as lust as Mars. So it, it's interesting to keep in mind. This is not, none of these energies are more like a more, or none of these energies are more like Juno or the sun, which is vibrant love, whether no matter, who, you know, who you are devoid of ego, this is more preference, sexual preference, this deep lustful desire or light pleasant lust, you know? So it's very, very sexy when it's conjuncted. And when your Mars or Venus is conjunct someone else's Mars or Venus, this once again is very, very, very much so experienced very profoundly. There's a there's a heavenly quality in some aspects of how easy it is to click. Very, very predominant too in classic combos where you have the more masculine influence harnessing the Mars energy and the feminine influence harnessing the Venus energy. You will find there's an instant attraction because of this classic combination. And once again, this is very important as a lot of the desire evoked from Mars is everything that the Venus person loves. So in this case, Venus, who can sometimes be turned off, is extremely turned on and lusting Mars. This is, this is very important because it works the other way around even for a very masculine influence who has their Venus on the Mars 
of a very feminine influence, you will find that that feminine influence starts to act very masculine in ways that kind of are uncharacteristic to their nature. And the masculine will have to learn receptivity which is why it's very important. And in some cases, that gender role reversal leads into very great, that gender role reversal leads into very amazing harmonization. And in that sense, you know what I mean? Um, it, in that sense, it, it you wanna be mindful of certain schools of thought who say that it's not as powerful if the the feminine influence has their Mars on the Venus of a masculine influence. This couldn't be further from the truth. And in some cases, that is even more powerful, especially when like the woman has her Mars on the man's Venus. We want to look to a double whammy that we call to where there's a positive influence, but conjunctions like this force both couples to harmonize their energies and to get used doing things that are not they're not used to. But this has to be balanced by the other, where the man's Mars or the masculine influence Mars also balances with the feminine influence Mars. But regardless, the conjunction is a very amazing. Um, instant click and connection. And in the case of synastry, you'll find that there's also a sense of creative passion that these two are inspired to naturally express together. It's easy for them to have fun. Okay. In the case of a transit now, when Mars is transiting Venus, this is very key because this indicates a time where you can initiate new creative ideas and take action on a lot of stuff that's pleasing to you, especially when Mars is conjunct Venus transiting. It's a great time to initiate new relationships or rather to initiate, I won't say new relationships, it's a good time to initiate new connections. I mean more initiate meeting someone new or to express passionate feelings to someone as well. Okay, so as we move forward, the next aspect we have here is Mars opposite Venus, okay? Mars opposite Venus is going to indicate a very classic opposition that in most cases, is even more potent than the conjunction. See, the conjunction is going to unify desire and pleasure to where they can connect instantly. It's very common to see two people with their Mars and Venus conjunct hooking up very quickly because there's no barriers into how they, their desire and pleasure communicates. However, the opposition brings with it quite a challenge. The reason why the opposition ends up being a lot more potent than the conjunction is that the challenge only represents two polarities of the energy that once those energies come together, create completion in a way that's even more powerful, in some cases, once again, than the conjunction. This would be really cool to experience for certain people who have like a, a Mars and Venus conjunction, and then they also have a Mars-Venus opposition. That could be extremely powerful. And once again, a lot of what makes Mars and Venus um, potent in the opposition is you are now taking two opposite signs and bringing them into completion so that both energies can meet in the middle as especially in the case of fixed signs and cardinal signs oppositions can create certain tug of wars also in the cases of squares too 
and this could cause an influence you internally or both people involved to not really see eye to eye to where in the case even natally or in synastry the expression of your mars is going to trigger instantly the opposite reaction in venus all right and it's not so much really an opposite reaction it's it could in many cases be a complementary reaction which ultimately is the goal here to to develop something more than complementary and actually really just step into in a great way this union that's very possible because this is what happens ideally now when you're able to handle your mars venus opposition in the natal chart or one who has this they're able to take the general mode of how they sense pleasure or desire and now complement it very powerfully or bring it into completion with the other energy all right let's take for example someone who has their mars in aries but their venus in libra internally at the core they're going to desire taking action personal to them and doing things instantly but what pleases them is to get an insight into what others want to do and this can clash directly with their desire to do things personally coming into harmony with these two energies will now indicate the ability to act off personal desire and gain pleasure with doing this with other people to where you're able to really unify both opposites and it definitely is possible this can be seen for example in someone who wait you know evokes their venus and sees what other people want to do and then comes up with their own solution that in essence kind of makes everyone win and the only time an opposition is an issue is if one or both sides refuse to compromise that's usually when you will find problems with the opposition especially because you'll really see a difference between how both opposite sides see things, which is what needs to be brought into unification. In the case of synastry, oh my goodness, this is a very sexy. It's a very, very, very sexual aspect that because of the initial challenge and slight tension, once this is brought into union, definitely creates a very powerful passion that is somewhat sometimes addicting, just like in the case of the conjunction, but only if both can come into harmony, because in usual cases, the opposition is met with extreme attraction, but conflict initially that has to be worked through. So once again, in the case of Mars and Aries, with someone else who has their Venus in Libra, let's say, the Mars in Aries is going to be very direct and bold in their approach. So with the Venus in Aries, they can be direct and bold and just start immediately touching the Venus in Aries. And the Venus in Aries is gonna like that. They're gonna like that someone's that direct and, and willing to be raw and authentic. A Venus in Libra, is also going to be very attracted to that, but will not necessarily prefer that. And would rather, like a Mars in Libra, act a bit more tactfully. This is where harmonization comes into great play because if the Venus in Libra now becomes a bit too direct, the Mars and Aries could lose attraction for what it was originally attracted to. And that's one thing in the dance. Oppositions are very much so a dance where you don't want to lose your original essence, but still find ways to 
dance with both to where in the case of synastry, once again, the Mars wants to keep their dominance while the Venus wants to keep their feminine receptivity. However, coming to ways to balance both will definitely have much to do with timing and tact. In the case of Mars and Aries, it's not that Mars and Aries has to be any less forceful, but definitely know when and how. And this will come, of course, through conflict and resolution of conflict to where you find a rhythm where you can both dance. Because once again, when even in the case of one's Venus and Mars reach completion, a lot that the Mars or Venus position couldn't do in that one sign, the opposition fulfills making great for partnerships. This is what makes the opposition very tantalizing, but in some cases will lead to more arguments when they're not willing to come to union. In the case of the transits now, when Mars is opposite Venus, this will also indicate a great time to establish relationships and to take any such initiatives that were sparked during the conjunction phase and bring them to completion to where any ideas created, you're expressing fully towards others, okay? As we step into uh, the next transit, bloop, 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 bloop. we of course have full sexual expression. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Mars, Venus conjunction is one of the hottest, but that can get pretty boring because that energy is ultimately the same. If you're not able to find ways to spice it up, even though spicing it up will be so easy. The opposition is also very amazing or rather a great amount of challenging. It's the trine though, that I feel is the most fun because the trine between Mars and Venus gives them both the ability to fully express their sexual desire and pleasure for one another, especially in fire signs. But you will see this mirrored in the depth of quality in water signs and the great sensuality in earth signs, as well as the mental harmony in air signs. The trine between Mars and Venus allows for not only tantalizing sexual bliss, but the development of talents and creativity. In the natal chart, Mars trine Venus people are able to manifest very pleasant se sexual experiences for themselves because you definitely come into a very great and powerful a way to express your desire that will make the person with this aspect a very attractive and similar to the conjunction, people who have Mars trine Venus are effortlessly creative. And it's, it's very easy for them to take action that represents the level of creativity they have in their heart. Whether Mars is fully expressing the pleasure from Venus or Venus is fully expressing her pleasure from Mars. As there is a subtle difference between when Venus is the fifth house from Mars versus when Mars is the fifth house from Venus. Venus, the fifth house from Mars, knows how to charm people. It's more of a reverse effect where they're, they're still very sexual in their expression and creative but definitely more charming in an effort to draw people 
back to Mars. Whereas Mars, five signs away from Venus or five houses away, definitely goes out and brings along the charm, but also brings a more passionate level of how they express their sexuality. Hmm. You'll find uh, people with this trine also very attractive too. And in the case of sinistry, oh my goodness, this is definitely a very, very sexually uh, awesome and amazing experience to be shared and had as Mars will fully fulfill the desires of Venus and vice versa, taking the talents that both have and drawing it out so that there could be fun derived. Usually you'll feel the passion and it's easy for one who's Venus trines your Mars to have fun with you. It's nothing that has to be forced at all. There's just a natural quality of pushing each other to develop each other's talents. And as such, you'll really feel this um, indicated with people who work on creative projects together, where it's very easy. They can just be together and come up with something fun to do or work on on the spot as they creatively spur each other along. In the case of the tr transits, you'll find that, of course, the trine between Mars and Venus bring with it a full expression of anything sparked during the conjunction phase. This is a fascinating period to take a partner out to have fun or to go out and find, oh, said partner, you know, not partner, but someone to have fun with, okay? It's a great period to shoot your shot too. If you find that you just feel more creative, um, although you'd wanna look to more how this aspects your natal energies, but even if it's challenging, it's still very creative of a tra transit to work on very creative projects sexual tension my favorite i'm just joking this is not easy to have mars square venus is usually going to create enemies before it creates lovers so it's very 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 common to see in charts of marriage, married partners or, or people relationships, Mars square Venus, and that the, the Venus person probably didn't like the Mars person or vice versa, where they had an attraction, but they just didn't like each other. Cause at first you, and I'm gonna repeat that. It, it's very common to see Mars square Venus aspects in a chart between married people and people in relationships who at first they really didn't like each other. And it wasn't until they came to, they found a way to compromise these energies that they were able to take something challenging and actually make it very pleasurable. So Mars square Venus in the natal chart or Incompatibility is one of the most sexually fulfilling aspects, but it's so challenging to achieve. Most people will never experience it. As the sense of timing and compromise has to be established every time. Similar to the opposition, since in both cases, they share the same state. Trine sextiles and conjunctions 
have this ease of flow with it to where there does not have to be a compromise because there is a similar alignment to what both people please and desire. However, unfortunately, in the case of the square, or fortunately, in the case of the squared opposition, there is incredible challenge. As long as this challenge is compromised with in each instance, something as challenging, once again, could be very fulfilling. Because in the case of the square, the challenge is brought up to supplement a need from either the Venus or the Mars, especially in the case of the natal chart, personally, where there will be an incredible clash between Mars and Venus. Let's take, for example, again, in the case of Mars and Aries, where the opposition to Venus and Libra made it challenging to be more selfish in their pursuits because what pleases them is what others desire. However, in the case of the square, you'll find this challenge is much harsher because where Venus and Libra can compromise in the middle and sometimes let Mars and Aries do what they want, as, as long as Venus and Libra will have theirs and be balanced, Venus in Capricorn is not necessarily going to be inclined at all <laughs> to ever want to align with Mars advances, especially because Venus in Capricorn is going to want to control and plan and organize when they experience what they desire versus Mars and Aries that's going to want to do this now. Keep this in mind because you'll find in the case of Mars and Cancer versus Mars and Capricorn, sorry, Venus and Cancer versus Venus and Capricorn, both are squares, okay? However, the dominant energy will have more say. Capricorn, even though it's a weaker element, is dominant to Aries, given the 10th house influence. So Mars and Aries may have to have the leash put on by Venus and Cap to where Mars will meet challenge until Venus decides uh, it, it ultimately wants the fire from Mars, which if we now keep in mind, the fire that Mars and Aries has is what Venus and Capricorn needs. And sometimes Venus and Capricorn may need that fire lit and may need Mars and Aries to just act impulsively, which will still express itself as a clash, but still supplement a need, normally under the conditions of timing being met. So, in its worst, you have one who stops themselves from acting off what they desire because they're pleased by everything being in order first. So, their Mars field stifles, where in their best, they're able to control their Mars and Aries and wait till the right time and then act instantly. And there you have the best of both worlds, even though there will be tension derived because. In order for harmony to be achieved at one level, there will be an amazing, incredible tension built. And as such, instead of this energy being free flowing, especially in the case of synastry charts, there will be incredible amounts of sexual tension that are built until it's released. So the tension during squares gets built and then release where there is a constant state of flow in a conjunction or a trine. There's never usually tension built, um, even if willingly, because the alignment is just so fluid. The square will build tension, kind of like turning on and off a faucet, to where one with the Venus in Cancer, if we apply this to synastry, you'll find the Venus in Capricorn usually turns down the Mars and Aries advances until the Venus in Capricorn 
it, their pleasures are fulfilled. Okay, they withhold versus Venus and Cancer, who is still going to feel the square in a harsh way, as sometimes Mars in Aries could be a bit too aggressive and insensitive for Venus and Cancer. However, Venus and Cancer will still subdue to the Mars in Aries, whereas it'll be more difficult for the Venus and Capricorn to subdue themselves. Keep this in mind, not every square is the same. You never want to be put off by squares between Venus and Mars because these indicate great opportunities for growth to where a square between Venus and Gemini and Mars in Virgo can create a lot of clash because the free spirited nature that Venus and Gemini wants to have when engaging with others will clash with the analytical discrimination that Mars and Virgo may cause Venus and Gemini to experience. However, on the surface, even though this creates tension on a mental and physical level, when released works very well together because a lot of the, the truth will be supplemented with facts to when this tension is released, add more. It doesn't bring in, into full completion like an opposition, but it definitely does create greater room for, for growth and evolution. Although once again, because there is still a square, there will be a lot of challenges to where once you achieve the challenge, you go directly to another challenge. It doesn't always have to be bad. And you wanna see if the other Mars and Venus has a positive aspect, but even if they're both negative aspects, there's greater reward for the challenge as opposed to the pleasant aspects where the reward is already experienced. So it is worth it. I'm saying it's not as pleasant, but it is worth it to work through any squared issues. But get you a trine. I'm just saying. <laughs> Sexual compliment now with Mars sextile Venus. And I mean, when Mars sextiles Venus, no pun intended, you have with it an opportunity for growth that flows without any challenge, which is what makes this sextile more pleasing than the square. And not only does it create greater opportunity, but this adds great complement because unlike the trine, which sticks with the same element, this takes two different elements that complement each other very profoundly. I think this may be uh, another underestimated aspect just due to the simplicity of how well it works and the ease uh, where there's greater growth and opportunity created because in the case of the sextile, there are skills that develop based on what the Mars or Venus individual interacts with the sextiled essence. Instead of the trine that will fully express this energy, the sextile will, at an initial level, create opportunity to develop full expression once this continues to rev and generate. But it's still amazing. And you'll usually see these sextiles between water and earth, which takes a sensual element of physicality and adds feeling and depth to it. So you feel this physical energy, really tantalizing sextiles. Mars and Venus sextiling with water, earth, they feel really good versus fire and air, which is very invigorating and very exciting. And anything that, for example, you know, someone who has their Mars and Aries and their Venus and Gemini is not only going to be able to take impulsive action, but supplement it with on the spot, on the fly, charming words to say. And not just charming words to say, 
this is this could express itself during the sexual act where you know they express loving pleasing words during this intense act and in the case of synastry you'll find that the mars person and the venus person are able to add two and two to together one is peanut butter the other is jelly and they both make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in the case once again with fire and air this makes for a very exciting dynamic match to where the air energy whether mars or venus adds ideas to the all to, to what the fire energy is ready to do and with water and earth there's just such a great level of physical sensuality with depth that can make it slightly addictive in some cases okay Sexual transformation now is going to be brought in with the King Kunks. So when Venus, and Mars, we, we look, you know, King Kunks, when, when Venus and Mars King Kunks, we have uh, another challenge, but brings with it a very intense amount of tension that can sometimes rival the square. Now, a lot of astrologers speak or, or people speak of the major aspects, you know, the opposition, the square, the trine, the sextile, the conjunction, but there are also two more other aspects. It is impossible for a planet to not aspect another planet. It is absolutely impossible. There is no such thing in astrology as an unaspected planet. However, there are certain minor aspects that don't get talked about a lot. And it's really just because they're misunderstood. Because the king kunks, and as we'll speak on, the semi-sextile, which are considered minor aspects, are just as major as the sextile and trine, but they're very subtle. And this is why they may not necessarily be as spoken on or brought up towards. Sexual transformation is very much so brought into play with Mars, King Kong's Venus, but it could be very difficult sometimes for there to be any sort of sexual attraction on the onset. Something like this will kind of just create tension all the way through unless one person uh, on either end decides to take a risk, <laughs> which is very awkward in some cases, especially in the case of the natal chart. What the King Kunks is doing is allowing Mars or Venus to perfect and completely transform the desire based on what is being pleased or what is being charmed. The different element and state of both energies create a chemical imbalance that forces both to come to a middle ground, except they can't come to a middle ground because it's not an opposition. This now forces one or the other to have to change and transform their intent to create indirect harmony. Even though something like this sounds very difficult, it's actually one of the best aspects to have, to have like deep transformative sex. Um, when you, especially in a case of synastry, when you have someone who's, when you have sex with someone whose Venus is King Kunks your Mars, or whose Mars is King Kunks your Venus, it, it, there, it, it, it's kind of like getting on a bike that you haven't rid before. It's like at first, you know, you rev too quickly and then it, with time and, and practice, all right, this is going to perfect the technique and it can create something very unique. There are two types of King Kunkses here. You're going to have the perfecting King Kunks and the transformative King Kunks, but they, they both bring sexual transformation because there will be an eighth house effect regardless. And I mean more when the Mars is the eighth house to the Venus or when Venus is the eighth house to the Mars. You'll find that there 
the, whichever receives the eighth house effect has to surrender and the eighth house planet will have more power. In the case of synastry, for example, a Mars in Aries is gonna have to surrender to the strategy of Venus and Scorpio employees, trapping Mars and Aries into their web to where Venus and Scorpio has discretion to completely seduce Mars. Whereas Mars in Scorpio is gonna seduce the crap out of Venus and Aries and really have its way with Venus. A lot of that Aries energy will not will clash directly with the fixed water, but when they connect, it's a nuclear combustion that can make for sexual experiences that are unforgettable. But the theme here with the King Kungses are that it does create a certain love-hate relationship where there's no in-between and there's an extreme. Especially in a case of relationships, you either kind of hate them or and sometimes or love them. Because when it when it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's bad. In the case of the perfecting conjunction, this is seen, let's say if Mars is in Aries and Venus is in Virgo, Mars is gonna have more of the power here. But Venus and Virgo will really help perfect the way Mars expresses their intent. To where Venus and Scorpio will transform totally the way Mars surrenders into this. In the case of a transit now, I forgot to mention with the sextile, sextiles will open up opportunities to develop greater skills sexually or in the case of interpersonal social dynamics, which is also very important because they illustrate a very important amount and element of power that you're able to once again bring with these compliments. But once again, with now the King Kunks, usually during a transit like this, this will indicate opportunities, opportunities to transform or make changes in certain things that were fully fleshed out during the trine or came into union during the opposition. So that whatever needs to be adjusted or transformed can do so in the King Kunks. The final aspect that we're going to look at is the semi-sextile indicated by Mars, which is either behind Venus or in front of Venus. I personally have this. I have Mars in Aries and Venus in Taurus. And in that sense, this allows for profound amounts of sexual transcendence, but can bring a lot of frustration if, once again, like the case of the King Kung Sir Square or opposition, these opposing these forces are not brought into harmony. There is there are oppositions with semi sextiles, but similar to the case of the King Kunks, there will need to be surrendering on one's part. It's actually more common and subtle than you may know. There's a twelfth house effect that Mars makes to Venus or Venus makes to Mars which is very important to keep in context in mind when understanding which energy is at front. You almost wanna see these two hand in hand as a second house effect will take, in this case with Venus, the ability to manifest the desires of the Mars or manifest the pleasure of Venus directly with Mars. This is not an aspect you want to sleep on because you gain transcendence through the full realization of one's pleasure or desire. And in the natal chart, if per se Venus is in front, there's going to be charm that is the mask of deep desire inside. 
versus if Mars is in front, there will be more direct while inside there's great pleasure and strategy employed and charm rather in how they seduce with the Mars. However, the challenge here is in a lot of ways, the, the, the 12th house energy could sabotage the second house energy. And for example, the Mars and Aries can sabotage the efforts of what Venus and Taurus pleases because Venus and Taurus is going to want something stable, but Mars and Aries will desire something now and quick and, and can act off of that versus Mars and Taurus that won't really take action, even though Venus and Aries does, will be pleased very much by action. In the case of Sinistry, this dynamic is once again brought into focus, but it's very subtle. And normally it's the Mars individual that will have their way here. If you find someone's Mars semi sextiles your Venus, there could almost sometimes be some slight manipulation, but it could be very sexually rewarding just in very private ways. The Mars person could have secret sexual trias with the Venus person or just in the way they express their desire in ways, you know, behind closed doors or, or in ways that undermine the Venus. This could be a bit dangerous sometimes versus if someone's Venus is behind the Mars, this will also allow the Mars to take actions that show the Venus how beautiful they are. All right, whereas the Venus person definitely gives the Mars ener the Martian energy a greater spiritual experience. But still, the, the, it's not so much a clash. Sometimes it could just feel like something's does, you can't put your finger on the, the energy that's behind you. And of course, usually in transits, this will indicate surrender and sacrifice before one is ready to move on to the next level of creativity and creative ideas marked by the conjunction. All right. So, um, Now that we've finished the aspects, we are now going to briefly uncover the significance of Mars with other people's Mars and Sinistry. Desire and Sinistry is uh, also very important because it's one thing for your Mars to have to harmonize with someone else's Venus. However, it's also very important that your Mars gets along with their Mars. If we're speaking strictly sexually in a sense where the way you both take action has to also align, if it clashes, this can get in the way with certain a bit a certain opportunity for harmony to be re re reached. In that sense, in Sinistry, when you have very positive Mars aspects, you're going to see a very passionate ability for two people to connect very passionately. I want you to more so think of this sexually, but also with two people going on an adventure. Mars conjunctions will bring with it an effortless connection of how two people sexually engage. Um, from experience, this may actually even bring instant sexual encounters, especially in the case of Aries. But it's also very powerful for working in teams because 
both people involved are able to act in the same way. And in the case of the sextile and trine, these positive aspects will express fully how well both people desire the same things, but in ways that bring out each other's skills and talents. In the case of the opposition, you'll find that there is not only difficulty, but this could be very common in two people who fight a lot together because even if they bring it in harmony, just on an energetic level, there will be some kind of there will be some kind of direct combat, combat com, com, combative influence that will irritate each of the Mars. But this could also be even greater for sex because of this reason, because it forces both to come into harmony or just like die trying. <laughs> um, and in the case of the square, we have this dynamic here again where we need to come into compromise or uh, a lot of this tension will just add and, and bring more conflict. Mars squares that are not resolved bring nothing but conflict between two people as the way they're going to take action uh, directly conflicts. So if we're going on an adventure, right? People who have Mars conjunct are gonna go the same way instinctually. They're just gonna directly go forward or do things in the same way. Whereas if, if they're Mars trined, they're gonna go the same way. And the, the other person who's Mars trined is gonna be like, you know, clearing the space for them so that they can cover both bases. And in this case of the sextile, as someone goes forward, the other Mars is also complementing their action so that what they're moving forward, they're covering base as well. In the case of the square or opposition, as so, <clears throat> in the case of the square, <clears throat> one person may want to go forward, the other person may want to go right. And it's like, whoa, hold on, we're not going the same way. What do you mean? And it's like, no, we got to go this way. And you're like, no, we got to go that way. And in the case of opposition, you could be wanting to go that way, the other person could be wanting to go opposite. And it's like, this might not work. What the hell? And there has to be compromise to where if this comes into harmony, two of you are going to have to go one way before you go the other way. And that and one, and one energy is not going to like going that way, but this can complement the energy to where in some cases you can in the opposition, you can go one way, the other person can go the opposite, and then you can come back and then share what you have or come into conflict because you don't. And in the case of the square, you may have to find, once again, compromise. If it was a semi-sextile, let's say, then one person would just follow the other. And in the case of the semi-sextile, one person is going straight, the other person is behind them, aware of their blind spots and making sure they take care of what's back, right? They're like back to back. And in the case of the king kunks, one person can go forward and then the other person will monitor their movements to make sure, hey, stop, slow down, do this. You know, it's kind of micromanaging, but that's a good illustration, I feel. And uh, it kind of lets you know how well to deal with certain challenges, okay? Finally, in the case of Venus, with pleasure and compatibility, this is one of those rare aspects like the moon where even though there will be unpleasantness, Harsh aspects between Venus actually create greater opportunity. Because the receptivity of this Venusian influence will at most just create maybe a bias of opinion or subjective interest, this allows both people to come into, once again, better pleasure. So the analogy I want to give for Venus and synastry in this aspect is going to find its roots in things you both pl buy pleasurable. So with Mars, I gave you the example of going on an adventure, right? Something that involves action. For Venus, let's say we're going to the mall, right? Venus loves the mall. And for two people whose Venus, uh, Venuses are conjunct, without them having to say anything, they're just gonna walk into the same store. And 
a lot of the stuff they buy will definitely be very similar. They're going to like the same stuff. Venus, trying someone else's Venus will not only walk into the same store, but it's like if somebody got something, whatever the trying got is something that brings that item to its full potential, let's say. It's like if they went into a game store, right? You have a Venus in Gemini and a Venus in Aquarius, okay? And you go to the game store and the Venus in, in Gemini or the Venus in Aquarius buys a PlayStation 4, well, the Venus in Gemini is gonna buy the plugins and the games and the walkthroughs. They, they, they totally, you know, connect with each other. And, in the, and it's very much so like a sextile, they complement each other. But in the case of the sextile, you know, the, the, both Venuses could go to different stores. And what they get is stuff that completely complements each other. Like the, the, the Venus in Libra can go to the H&M and buy a really dope scarf. And then Venus in Leo can go to another store and buy a hat that complements that scarf. All right. Versus now in the challenging aspects, when you have Venus square Venus or Venus opposite Venus, you know, you may be with someone who has Venus square Venus or Venus opposite Venus. And they go to this very posh clothing store, but you're goth and you just like dark material. And you don't like anything in the store at all. Like you're not even you're at this point, you're just here because you're waiting for them to get what they want. And then you're going to go get what you want. OK, so when it comes to oppositions, when it comes to squares, when it comes to King Kungses, there has to be some type of compromise where you're having to develop taste. Now you're going to have to it, it's, it's classic with music. A square is going to be someone who likes country and another person who likes gangster rap. And unless they're able to like, both, you know, through that connection now, because they had to go through that square in six months, you'll find the country, the country s singer now has some favorite rap songs because the partner they had always bumped rap and they don't really like it, but they found some stuff they like. And then that person who never listened to country, they have some country songs they like. So this is what I mean when I say like squares could be dope. It can introduce you to develop different tastes that you're not used to, but it has to come with compromise. If the person's like, nope, I'm never listening to country, and the guy's like, nope, I'm never listening to rap, it'll never work. The opposition is going to be like the square, but once again, something that actually, you know, very complements where this, this issue with the square, it's so much more harsh. Like, gangster rap and country with the opposition it's like gangster rap and r&b someone that just you know v one person's venus just wants to hear rhythm and blues they want to hear that you know very you know har harmonizing melodies and, and that soul music and then the other person's venus wants to hear that hard gritty gangster rap it's like opposite each other but it can come into complement and they can make music that is gritty, but then it has that soulful essence to it. It's gonna be very challenging, but it's definitely possible to where they incorporate both elements, okay? Although there will also be times where they have to kind of balance both. All right. And of course, in the case of the semi-sextile, you may have one having to completely give up what they like just to entertain the other, just kind of like how one follows the other, but also shadowing and protecting. So thank you once again for joining me of this webinar. This one was definitely a lot more straight and to the point, but I would now like for you to think about your aspects that you have and ask if your understanding of it has, if you've gained any understanding or, or um, how, how much more you understand it now. And even if you didn't, that's totally fine. That's a great indicator. Before we go into the Q and A, there's some advanced techniques I'd like to share with you today. Pleasure and desire party is a ceremony that you can have 
with somebody else who you know their Mars and Venus sign. And this is a ceremony that introduces your Mars and your Venuses to each other. So you'll take your Mars and you will introduce it to their Venus. You do not take your Venus and introduce it to their Mars. Okay, so keep that in mind. In this pleasure and desire party, you will share what you what both brings you pleasure and what you desire. And the purpose of the ceremony is to have the Mars person present the Venus person with what the Venus person desires while the Mars does it in their way and vice versa. The other person will take their Mars and then align it with the other person's Venus where the Mars person is fulfilling the desires of the Venus person. The purpose of this party and ceremony is to experience any such clashes or harmony and to establish this. Subtle effect, and you can do it as many times as you want. This is really more beneficial for those who have Mars and Venus signs that clash each other. You also want to look at Mars and Venus in the progress chart because that is going to indicate primarily how much aspects have yet to come into greater development. There are different dimensions to this now too. For example, you could have Mars and Venus express themselves very powerfully in a chart, right? But then, your Mars might progress to a place that even though it's sextiled your partner's Venus, now it squares their Venus. And even though you have good compatibility, there could be challenges arising in your relationship. And you want to look to that progressed square to the natal planet as creating a new challenge that has to be fulfilled as your Mars is evolving and vice versa. You could also take the progressions and align them together to where your progressed Venuses and Mars might sextile, just like the natal. But I want you to apply this technique from progressive progressions applied to natal aspects with other people. This works the other way around. If you find that your Venus squares someone's Mars, as that person's Mars progresses to one that trines your natal Venus, that will speak of the development to where they might have clashed, but now they definitely connect very amazingly. This is another reason why you never want to run away from someone who has challenging aspects at first, because if you have challenging aspects with someone at first, over time, they'll ease up. If you have pleasant aspects with someone, over time, they'll become challenging. It's a secret right there. And of course, solar return impressions, where you can look at your solar return and you can gauge the quality of love and sex in your life by the aspects of Venus and Mars. If you have Venus and Mars sextile in your solar return chart, you'll find you have great opportunities to connect with people. You want to look to the sign and the house it is to show you how. If you find Venus is square Mars in your solar return chart, you know that's going to be a year where you have to work through balancing and compromising that will experience itself in every relationship you have with others so that you gain this lesson. If it's conjunct, you'll find that you might be sparking a new project, a new relationship. The possibilities are endless. And finally, I am now open for Q&A. I'll be open to answer one question from each of y'all about Mars and Venus in your chart, whether you want to know about a compatibility or synastry aspect you have or how to understand it in your chart. <coughs> Thank you once again for ordering this webinar. Y'all are awesome as usual. 
and congratulations for making it through all three parts. Uh huh. What about two? What about just two progress charts, asked Jaiwan. Good question. Um, two progress charts will also apply just like two natal charts. You just want to see that as the evolution of your energies. So you can, you can actually interpret the natal and progress charts as two different people, your natal self and your evolved self, and you're adding a literal extra dimension to it. Very great question. Sinistry double whammies with Mars and Venus. Oh my God, Lilac Ocean. They are legit. I have experienced personally a Mars and Venus conjunction. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Never mind. I've experienced a Mars and Venus conjunction with someone whose Mars squared my Venus. And um, it was a double whammy. It was a, a tr it was it was a bit one sided though. I feel like there was um more desire on the other person's part because of the Venus square. But double whammy if it if it was a double whammy that actually um you know was powerful. Oh, interesting. Yeah, if it was a double whammy that was actually very powerful though. Uh, th that kind of energy would not clash. And Lilac Ocean 420, they are so amazing, especially if Mars and Mars and Venus and Venus make good double whammies. You have sexual completion in a very fun way. You just won't really have anything getting in the way. But sometimes, sometimes a harsh aspect might be needed because you'll learn challenges through the relationship. Okay. Mars, zero degree Virgo, Venus, nine degree Libra. Okay, so we have a semi-sextile effect here to where Mars is going to analytically support your ability to charm socially. It is not as bad as it seems, because I have this too. I have Mars and Aries, Venus and Taurus, and you really do get the best of both worlds. Like you're able to act in a sensual way, but then you're also able to communicate and detach. However, you want to make sure that you don't analyze too much, that you don't allow yourself the need to communicate. You want to allow Venus to communicate and then at discretion, analyze to support your Venus. Okay. And David, yes, please restate because you, you posted a multiple question. So I'm not sure which one you wanted. 
Sun conjuncting another's Venus, Joey. I recommend that you check out part one of this series because I go in at length. I have a slide dedicated to Venus and the sun. It's actually a very cool conjunction too because the Venus person becomes the definition of the sun. Well, let's just say the sun will create awareness of the beauty the Venus person has. And uh, it's, it's very powerful for affection too. The Venus person will indicate the, the, the awareness of love as well. Oh, well, you said your sun on another person, Venus. Yeah. So you for the Venus person will actually be the awareness of love in their life, what it looks like. So they'll find you beautiful. Um, yeah, having Chiron square Venus and Aries is very challenging, but it's nothing wrong with you. It just kind of forces you to keep the integrity of your Venus and Aries so that it stays vibrant. And if you find there's any challenge, it's just because you don't take shit from anybody. So that doesn't mean it's really anything wrong with you. It's just kind of difficult to go through, though. Um, composite Venus Mars, great question, Hessa. It's amazing. Com composite Venus Mars, even if you have harsh aspects out the relationship, encourage greater unification. But you're going to experience more sexual energy if it's directly synastry. Okay, but great question. The composite Venus and Mars will create a sexual feel to the energy and create greater opportunity to do so. Ooh, okay, so Venus conjunct Neptune opposite to Mars is going to make your desire a radar based off what your heart sees the meaning of because Venus conjunct Neptune is a very sacred aspect, which in Sagittarius allows you to see into the meaning of your connections with others, but more so how you also, you know, divinely express pleasure through the utilization of your imagination. Mars opposite this will complement this with the right words, but could also create confusion because a lot of what you see, you may not really care about communicating. Although thankfully this is Mars here and not the other way around, which may have been a bit more troubling. It, it's, it's not bad, especially since it's in the eighth house too, the way you deal with others will take into account a lot of what you're able to manifest with Venus and show people while showing and telling them. Ooh, we got a triple fire. Oh, wow. So Lucy truly is a Sag. Okay. Venus and Scorpio and Mars and Virgo. Nice. That sextile is going to be very sexy because a whole lot of your heart's ability to harness a lot of depth and, and sexual intent will be very sensually expressed through your Mars and Virgo, touching people in the right places that really evoke your deep feeling and desire for them. And I like that sextile personally because it indicates very profound strategy as well as ability to analyze before one takes action. <clears throat> It's actually very sexual sextile. <clears throat> the only other woman I've met in person with it was super sexy. And like she 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 knew how to express her sexual intent through her body while still, you know, holding that sexual depth. Thank you one and all for joining me, however. Very excited to wrap up this webinar. I think this was one of the more, this was definitely a cool webinar. 
as far as really at least seeing into the aspects. I don't necessarily go a bit too aspect heavy. So y'all stay blessed. Thank you once again for tuning in. If you haven't gotten part one and two, totally recommend you do. And if you got all three, congratulations. You stay blessed. Peace.